Witi Binafi. Saludos desde Bangkok, Tailandia. Greetings from Bangkok, Thailand. And we are in the pose of no to any kind of exclusions, no to discrimination, no to lack of tolerance. We are saying yes to unity and diversity. And our guest, number 173 of Wani in Moving Culture series is a very exciting person. She is an American Garifuna and she's a singer, she's a mother, she's a daughter, she's a sister, and she's a woman who has worked very hard to let American society to know about our ancestry, the Garifuna culture. So let's welcome Lucy Blanco from US. Hello, Lucy, how are you? Witi Binafi and Witi Guyu. Witi Guyu. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> We're covering both sides of the planet. <laughs> yes, it's so exciting that it's an evening time for you in the United States and it's morning hours for me in Bangkok, Thailand. And that doesn't make difficult this connection between two different persons around the globe. So Lucy, Today, we are happy to celebrate unity and diversity with you, and we are really looking forward to walk through your life. So who is Lucy Blanco? Lucy Blanco is a Garifuna American, Ameri Garifuna American artist with um, Honduran and Garifuna heritage. And the Garifuna heritage was a, is a big part of my understanding of who I am as a person. When I was growing up, I was not very um, knowledgeable about what Garifuna was, what, it, what does it mean to be Garifuna? But as I started to create a path for myself in this music, that's how I came to an understanding about what Garifuna is and how proud I am of being a Garifuna American citizen. And that um, our ancestors have a rich legacy that my mission is part um, letting the world know what that legacy is and we can celebrate together most of the times when we when we have concerts, they're very, very family oriented and families from grandma, great grandma, all the way to the littlest children are attending our concerts because it's very inclusive and very diverse audiences. I know there is a way to welcome the ancestors to our conversation. We will be very happy if you can do the honors and the blessings with your voice and the Garifuna music. Thank you so much. I would like to sing for you uh, a jazz standard called Summertime. Uh, and, and I'll sing it in Garifuna. And the reason why I'm singing it in Garifuna because this is part of maintaining the heritage and the rich legacy that is our culture. Summertime. Malupidum i bagari ya wageira aning habara na luma wachare o anya hagupuriku afagwali dan i bagari le. Na mule loire de lang, baya wahang. La churu badang, bare muhaba, bare muhaba lida ubole, abale biurogu, segalugu sielugu. Dari mela churu dang ligia, masusuru du benika tabung. La ramu barasa garifuna buba de Oh, summertime, and the living is easy. Fish are jumping, and the cotton is high. Oh, your 
your daddy is rich and your ma is good looking. Hush, little sister, don't you cry. All this morning, you're going to rise up singing. You will spread your wings and you'll take to the sky. Till that morning comes, there is nothing to harm you. Mama and Daddy is standing by. Hey, summertime. <laughs> y la vida es tranquila. A que se salta y crece el algodón. Oh, tu papa es rico. rico. Y tu mama es bonita. Tranquilo, mi nene, no llores más. Una mañana te levantarás cantando. Tus alas abrirás y al cielo subirás. Pero hasta entonces nada puede dañarte. Oh, mama y papá cerca de ti. Thank you, Lucy, for bringing this song in three different languages to the table. So <laughs> let's talk about feeling safe. And this is about family. Tell us your story and your ancestry. Tell us about your grandmother, your grandparents, and your parents. How do they have? practically build the person you are today? So my grandparents, my mom, my dad, all of our family is so um, entrenched in working hard and providing a secure life for us. I am the oldest of four. So when my parents decided to come here, I thought that that was just revolutionary. Once I became to understand a little bit more about how they came here, that they were fearless because they didn't know anybody coming here. And it's very uh, scary to come to a country that you don't know and you, uh, and you hope to be able to make it a life for you and your children. And so um, when we growing up, education was very important for us. And education was important because we had to carve out what it was that we we're going to do in our life to maintain ourselves a sustenance. And the strength that my grandmother had as she was taking care of us, um, she was a strong woman and showed us her strength. I mean, she could, she would, she was quick with her feet. Sometimes she would just, she would just, she, she has this story. I, I share this story about how she actually got a rat with her foot, mm. her own foot. And oh. uh, she's, she's just, the first time I saw it was just, oh, it freaked me out. But after I got, <laughs> after that scene, I started to see, wow, she's a bad <laughs> Don't mess with our abuelita because she's gonna <laughs> get you. She's got a broom and she 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 can throw a hook. So um my family was uh very, very into just resiliency and making it regardless of what the situation is. As we were growing up, we came in the 60s, but I didn't know anything about what was happening in the 60s because. Um, we were just having a Garifuna household. The only difference is that we were in the Bronx and we weren't in Honduras. Mm -hmm. So all of our tradition of cooking and culture tradition is all the same, except we're doing it in New York. We're doing it in a city. Um, so that instilled us a strong sense of responsibility and work ethic and really strength and fortitude to be able to move forward. And whatever it is that you decide to do, um, 
you're going to be able to make it because you're strong, you're educated, you're smart, you have our ancestors watching over us. And even though I didn't really know exactly how they were actually doing it, there was not that much understanding or being shared. It only came to me as I became an older person and much more interested in my heritage. I came to understand that our spirituality is a really strong part of how we become who we are. And um, I decided to do this jazz music because I felt that it was a great way to represent our culture and tradition and, our, and it's a beautiful legacy of our music, our culture, our language, and being able to communicate in the music in the Garifuna is very important because some of us, I used to speak it when I was very little, but as I grew older, I found that I needed to learn it a little bit more. So I'm actually taking classes and that's part of how I am working my music. I'm incorporating the language in with the music and um, using as part of workshops sometimes when we do concerts and we give the audience, they're very, very interested in our culture and wanting to know about what dances we have and how um, we just practice our traditions. Do you manage to have some personal experiences in the Carifuna communities in Honduras? Have you traveled to Honduras? Not yet. Not yet, um, but I do have in here in New York, there's a very, I think New York is the largest popula population of Garinugu in, uh, in New York outside of the villages in Central America or Guatemala mm -hmm. or Belize. Um, and uh, the, the, the community is vibrant. And uh, it's nice to see it's a community of people who came and found a way to make their careers and work their, their purpose in what they're doing, whether it's dancing, uh, food, or uh, culture. Um, they found a way to make it work. And that's what I think, that's what I um, am most proud of, the resiliency that our people are having. You know, regardless of the challenges that come to us, we know because we come from a history of strong men and women that we will be able to survive and we are surviving. They tried to kill us off, but we're still here. Hundreds of years later, we're still here. And passing on those traditions to our young people with pride and beauty in our hearts. I have the amazing opportunity to be with you and also to participate in the Garifuna Music Awards uh, yes. organized by Francisco Avila and his team. And that's an example of how uh, collectives and people can get together and celebrate culture and tradition. And at the same time, uh, give the opportunity to know each other and to see where to go forward. I know that after that event, many things has changed, you know, in the way the Garifuna Collective is organized. You also are working with your ensemble in a different uh, format. Uh, I know Francisco already launched a book. It's Sulma who is yeah. doing a lot of lobbying, you know, with his uh, hair issues regarding to Afro communities. Let's mm -hmm. talk about the, the power of uh, the leadership and also mentorship in the Garifuna community in the United States. Uh, I would say that that is an ever evolving experience. There's so many people that have been in leadership in one form or another and involved in a community. And sometimes it branches off into various segments of the state, like um, Queens has a very large uh, Belizean 
uh, Garinagu community. And they also have their own uh, leadership. Everybody, basically, it's a melting pot. Um, I would like, I like to say uh, something that Jose Francisco Avila usually always says that we are, we are a melting pot. Just because I came from New York, that doesn't mean I'm not Garifuna. There are Garifunas that are from the Bronx. There are Garifunas from Staten Island. There are Garifunas in Chicago. And we're a whole melting pot just attracted to the, each other because we're passing on our legacy, our traditions, our cultures, and finding different ways to let people know about it. And the technology is a very, very important part of being able to provide its sustenance. In the pandemic, the, uh, the classes for Garifuna, excuse me, are, are classes that are held by a guy named uh, Milton Guiti. He's a Garifuna teacher. He does a lot of work with the state and um, promoting what's going on with the Garifuna community and doing these Garifuna classes. But the fact that we were in a pandemic and we ended up moving to the Zoom platform, we expanded our connection because then we had students from California, from Boston, Massachusetts coming to the classes. So now more people, are getting an understanding and a link to understand what's going on with the Garifuna community, what is Garifuna about, and uh, this is ways that you can find more about it. You have used uh, the Garifuna music as a way to connect with other cultures, and you have musicians, dancers, and uh, other kind of intellectuals and regular people who join your uh, musical activities. What can you tell us about that approach of unity and diversity in your musical work? Oh, that is a very, very exciting work. And again, I really see it as an ever evolving uh, experience because I'm learning so much more about myself and my spirituality and how the language, how Garifuna culture is a link that just brings it together. And uh, I'm finding that people are so much more open to receive information about different cultures, which we weren't that way before. Just 20 years ago, we weren't that way. But now that we are so much more open to receive other information about different cultures, people are very, very, very receptive. They want to know more. So many times when we do concerts, um, a segment of our presentation is including uh, dance instruction. And um, we have someone named um, Felix. He uh, runs the... Um, Chief Joseph Chateaulier dance troupe. And um, he is very good at explaining what the traditional dances mean and how we use this in our culture. And it just, it sets up a big, a big springboard, letting people know that this is a place where you can find out more about it. If you're not Garifuna, and if you are Garifuna, you can come and join and celebrate in the life of what it's like to be Garifuna and understanding that it's a beautiful uh, situation and growing, ever expanding community. What about the role of the music and dance in your project in order to empower the new generations and to make them to, to be more relevant and get out of the streets because you know there is a lot of violence and a lot of uh, issues related uh, with social uh, situations. How do you go about it? Well, in the, in the city, there's lots of different organizations that are reaching out to our young people and understanding that um, 
we can we can do something about our neighborhood. We don't have to just sit somewhere and just let the badness happen. We have to be empowered and we have leaders that understand what it's like to talk to young people and, and share very, very candidly what that experience is. And they start working through examples of how it is that you can work through certain things. That's how you start to find out you're not by yourself. I have these feelings too of inadequacy or feeling like someone's making me feel like I'm less. You, the miracle person that you are, you exist because you are an extension of the creator and that you are a beautiful being with lots of talents to offer the world and you have so much to offer you yourself. No two, no two people are alike and you can take pride in who you are. A lot of it has to do with our communication and being able to speak very, very what are you putting into the universe? Are you putting love into the universe? Are you putting uh, abundance? Are you, are you seeing the totality of possibilities? When you think in possibilities and understanding that you can create opportunities that come to you with how you think, your words you speak, and the, the things that you do are part of how you're creating a life. And we see more and more examples of people like Sulma, uh, I'll say like uh, Tini Martin Morales, um, Felix, uh, so many, Lou Solis made a book and uh, a, a CD with how to learn how to speak Garifuna mm -hmm. and Ruben Milton, Milton Guiti and Ruben Reyes, he's the California part. Um, there's so many people that are, that are doing so much work to expand the experience and the knowledge and expose how beautiful this culture is. You just mentioned a recurrent topic on my conversation with other change makers and leaders I have been interviewing and it's success. And success is, as you mentioned just right now, knowledge and opportunities. And I think we have to continue with this uh, conversation to let, like you say, the world know that success is not about having money. It, that's part of it. But success is having the, the capacity to connect with others and to transform your surroundings for the best and to have that feeling of peace and accomplishment. Let's talk, Lucy, about the struggles in the music business. So the struggles, um, I've really, I really am a very big uh, advocate for um, knowing oneself. Your, uh, your self-awareness really has a lot to do with how you see things, things that you believe, different patterns that you grew up with. You may not be following that and making a different choice, but um, the self-awareness is an important ingredient because that's what's going to make the difference in how successful you are. If you think positive things, if you're thinking abundance, um, you restrict yourself by just thinking, oh, I can only do so much. But if you're thinking abundantly and the totality of possibilities, that means that there are many, many ways. You can see many ways. Many times we're just, sometimes we grow up thinking, oh, I can only do this. Uh, I'm, I'm too tall or I'm too little. I can't do this, do that. But the idea is you have to have a totality of possibilities. Your ability to see many, many ways to do what it is that you're going to, that means that you attract also other beings that are attracted to that kind of energy. And when energy is together, we expand our possibilities. You can see other ways that you can do things. 
this is how I've been able to grow as an as a as an artist because I was able to connect with people and find some common threads that they resonated with and then made it easier for me to work with them. And it's, I think, related of uh, dealing with adversity from a constructive way. Adversity can be a good way of learning and doing like they say, a re reorientation, as you mentioned, and also to evaluate our own person. Because sometimes yes. adversity happens, not because what is happening out there, but it's like you say, your mindset, your energy, and also the choices. And I think it's good to keep that, those three points very clear for people. It's like mindset, energy, and also the possibility to choose what you consider to be not necessarily the easiest or the quickest, but also what is more relevant and meaningful. Let's talk about the power of women in the Garifuna community. The power of women is so substantial. Jose Avila always talks about how he feels he's standing um, because the women were part of our, our education, our development in the society. We did so much as, as the women, the nurturers and the educators showing that um, you can do so many different things. And we have a, a group of uh, Garina Gu that is very, very diverse and uh, working ways to be able to, um, despite the changing times, you are able to adjust accordingly and still be successful. We are not, and, and we never say die, you know? Uh, we keep going forward just because this little challenge is in, in our way, um, we can still find ways to move beyond it. Some things that may be fear, but when you can move through your fear, you find you surprise yourself that you can do so much more than you thought you could do. That's why I am such a big advocate of the self-awareness study, because when you get to learn more about yourself, you understand why you react certain ways to certain things, you have a now moment to be the most powerful you, to change the thought. So changing the way you're being will change your situation. And it's you can see what a difference that makes when you start to deliberately intend on creating that experience because you understand so much more about who you are. You can make a choice and you are at the most powerful self in the now moment to be able to change the direction of what your path is, the trajectory of what your life purpose is. Yeah, so you are really working with a concept of uh, one. It's like, doesn't matter if you're a man or you're a woman, if you're young or if you're old, it's about constructing. It's about always looking forward and see a brighter future. Exactly. Okay, Lucy, I know that due to the pandemia, in the COVID and all these uh, health issues, the mental problems had skyrocketed. What do you know? What, how do you approach this situation in the present moment? So for me, I started to, through the pandemic, I started to de develop different um, tips to put in our toolkit for us to be able to cope with this situation. The idea is to have a mask on, to, to not be around people. It's just not a normal thing to be, but yet this is what is happening. So it helps to uh, discuss what's going on with your friends and what's going on. And affirmations are also important because the affirmations 
help to keep you in a great space and keeping your vibration high. I, I started understanding that these affirmations are, was so important for me because it was easy to just put my attention on how depressed I feel because of what the situation is. But just because you're feeling that doesn't mean that you have to stay there. Listen to different, different people, Louise Hay, Abraham Hicks, um, Wayne Dyer. These are all people who have done uh, work in their life purpose work and what worked for them, the affirmations, how you think, the mindset, and how are you moving through it and dealing with everything in your life and having a, 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 a close-knit group of people that you can connect with, that you can talk to when you're feeling a certain way. That's a very important thing, discussing how you're feeling. Don't silo yourself and put yourself in a little solitude with no one else. You, it's, it, I think it's very important to connect with a group of people that you feel you can talk to about your, what you're feeling. As a singer, uh, the use of your voice as a catalyst of change is very powerful. What would you recommend to people about the use of art to heal and also to be in a better place emotionally, physically, and spiritually? Yes, um, art is so expansive. You never know what is going to resonate with you from one moment to the next. Once you start, that's again, another benefit of your self-awareness because sometimes uh, there's a group of people that may think, uh, a person that may think, oh, I'm not artistic enough. But you may be a, 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 a painter just learning to just branch out and reach out to the universe about what it is that you can create because we are an extension of the creator, the creator. So we can create, but sometimes the, the meaning of what is a creation doesn't always, um, they're, they're, they don't think of themselves an, as artists, but you can be an artist without having to go to a school, it just depends on what resonates with you. As long as you stay open to receive, stay open to be receiving the messages from the universe about what there is for you. There are endless possibilities. I think society has actually uh, transformed the meaning of art and creativity into a commercial situation, what is real. There is a, a moment where a popularity and fame is part of a big machinery of business who creates money. And uh, it's a little bit about being visual and make money. And then we have the other part about contemplation, devotion, and the use of the music as a way to, again, generate better energy and better connections and better understanding of the community. You know, and yeah. this is a big difference about the commercial side that is very individualistic. And then when we talk about art, it's about community and transformation. How can we make these two different aspects match? I think this is a, this is a lifelong um, activity in our lives. Um, it's very important to spend some time in meditation, quiet time, and listen for the signs because the universe is always communicating with us. Your inner being is always communicating with you. Sometimes you don't hear your inner being, um, but your inner being is there all the time, gathering the components for all the things that you have created that you want. So it's a very um, delicate balance, but it's, uh, it's again, a, a deliberate uh, 
practice of intending your intentions and the words you speak makes the biggest difference of what the impact is going to be in your life about what your art is going to be, whether it's writing, whether it's singing, whether it's creating uh, fixtures, whatever it is, understand that the possibilities are completely endless. It just takes you. And now you're talking, about, you're talking about expression because when you do everything with a inner connection, there is a reality of yourself that is projecting. You know, mm -hmm. if it's not artificial and it's not uh, plastic. You know, when you are in a position that you do a job that is uh, mechanical, without emotions, without uh, purpose, uh, of course, it can go to certain group of people, you know, who is looking for that kind of uh, connection, but not necessarily uh, create this synergy and this, uh, mm -hmm. we call sparks and emotion that, that you get with something that is more genuine. I know that you have been going through a, a very big spiritual journey. How do that start, Lucy? Uh, it just started with um, um, just doing the work on myself. And I, uh, I have a few friends that are also are, are interested in doing that kind of work. And we meet every month around the, big, the, the full moon and talk about how we are creating um, and developing a new sense of who we are as this life continues. Yes, and, and I think what you're doing is giving you the opportunity to, to live intense days. You know, it's like the last one and not to be afraid. As you mentioned before in the conversation, that fear can actually create a lot of damage into how you walk through life. Yes. How do you manage to understand fear from a constructive way? Because fear can also be a good advisor. Yes, so the fear is you have to be able to identify the things that you are afraid of. And despite the fact that you're afraid of them, you're going to continue to move forward despite your fear. And eventually the fear goes away because this is the transformational part is you being able to, re to face the fear. And despite that you're afraid, you can still do something. I was a very, very afraid of dogs for a long time. I used to go run and I would get chased by dogs. And so I had crazy fears about dogs. But eventually I learned how to um, get closer and develop a relationship with the dog. And when the dog got to know me more, then I became a little bit more comfortable. The fear was dissipating. Then if I was be friendly with that dog, then I can be friendly with this dog, one thing at a time. But it's about being able to meet the fear and tell yourself it's just a fear. You just have to come, you have to get over the fear and that that is something, a lesson that you have to learn maybe. Mm -hmm. And uh, the lesson that you learn, 2022 is the significance of 2022 is, is lessons learned. Lots of lessons. This life is, a lot of things happen in life and you don't know why certain things happen, but at some point, you get some clarity about what it is that you're doing. And once you get the clarity, that's how you can develop your own intuition and your decision-making process of how you're gonna get from one space to another space and be able to deal with life and learning how to make an ebb and flow of it. I have a... Uh, 
I've started a, a, a new job that I didn't know that I was going to have this experience, but um, I am meeting people every day and just having conversations with them and finding that there's so much work that people are doing on their own selves. They are wanting to be in a, in a good space all the time. Uh, most times, even if, even if they are in a bad mood, sometimes just having to that, have that interaction forces them to, oh, I realize I didn't really need to say what I said. I apologize. This is the kind of work that has happened when you start talking to people more. And when you start to, it just makes you feel good. You have your own internal guidance system that helps you feel good about what you're doing, which also raises your vibration and raise and the 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 the, uh, comp the compilation of your cells completely change because you're doing something that's raising your vibration, and you're feeling good about it, and um, that is a very healthy place to be. Lucy, we already reached the 30 minutes of our conversation and we'll be very <laughs> fantastic that we end up in a high note as you have done already, letting people know that you can be in a better place if you connect with your inner self. Will it be beautiful if you can give us a garifu nason to say goodbye and start our evening and end our day with a beautiful energy? Uh, let me think here. Um, I'm doing, this is a small portion of a very uh, popular song. Tall and tan and young and handsome, the boy from Ipanema goes walking. When he passes each one, he passes goes. Casabiri baby, Casabiri baby means, what's your name, baby? <laughs> <laughs> so the song is about how the 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 boy from Ipanema he doesn't know the girl he doesn't he doesn't have he doesn't make attention to the other uh women but um he realizes uh or she realizes that she's got to get his attention so he's got to say she's got to say his name first so Casaviri. <laughs> This is part of what I am doing when I am sharing my music is finding ways to incorporate hooks in a song and also be able to hear, you'll hear a, a, a little hook. Oh, Casabiri means, what's your name? In Garifuna, that's a great way to introduce it to a familiarly known song. And yes, like the girl from Ipanema, like you say, it's a, it's a way to, to add a special taste and a different uh, understanding to the audience. Yes, Lucy, yes. Thank you so much for promoting unity and diversity through your career, your personal life, and your way of thinking. And God bless you. And let's keep shining and advocating for inclusion. Say no Absolutely. to the lack of tolerance and the lack of opportunity. So see you soon and keep shining. Ashe, thank you so <laughs> much. <laughs> <laughs> thank, have a great one. Bye-bye.